Hi guys, this is Brit Brett coming at you on Saturday, June 25th, 2016. I am a day late, super sorry, but this is my 17 week post-op vertical sleeve gastrectomy update. It is also my four month surge anniversary. four months. Yes, 17 weeks isn't necessarily four months in the conventional way that we think of it, but the 24th of February is when I had my surgery of 2016. So on the 24th of June, that was my four month surgery anniversary. It was also my 32nd birthday. That is why I didn't make a video yesterday. Celebrating my birthday, having fun, doing things, naughty things, naughty things. <laughs> but we'll get into that in a second. Let me give you my whole intro spiel. Um, I had my surgery, as I said, on February 24th, 2016 in Chicago, Illinois at Northwestern Memorial Hospital under Dr. Jeffrey Franza. My highest ever recorded weight was 320 pounds, and on the day of surgery, my weight was 296.6 pounds. Last week, I came at you at 223 pounds even, and this week, I come at you at 219.9 pounds. That puts my BMI at 37.7 and my height is 5 foot 4 just in case you'd like to know. It gives me a 3.1 pound loss for the week and drum roll do 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 a 100.1 pound since my highest recorded weight um and let's see a 76.7 pound loss since surgery. So I am at 100 pounds down just like 0.1 pounds over 100 pounds down that is amazing for my highest weight from surgery i'm 76.7 pounds which means i'm over the 75 pounds lost since surgery mark a lot to celebrate you guys i am doing fantastic this week that 100 pound mark really made me feel fantastic especially since i weighed myself yesterday and it was, you know, just under that mark. I weighed myself, I think, on Wednesday, and I was already at 220.1. So I was already at that 100 pound um, mark, apart from that 0.1 on Wednesday. Um, I mean, on Thursday, yeah, Thursday. And then I weighed myself on Friday on my birthday, and I was at 219.9. So I'd lost like 0.2 pounds. It just slipped me into that for sure 100.1 pound. Mark, so I am I, I am so thrilled. So since surgery, that gives me an average loss of 4.8 or 4.5 pounds per week, and that's that's from my surgery weight, not my highest weight. So 4.5 pounds from surgery every week is what I'm averaging, <clears throat> which is fantastic. Last week I had a two pound loss. This week I had a three pound loss. That's the five pounds I needed. Um, to get me down to my weight. So I am thrilled. Two pounds, three pounds, great losses. I am, I'm thrilled. I, I can't expect, and I know that like at first we get really used to these like big numbers, the three pounds and the five pounds, and six pounds and stuff like that. And I'm not saying they'll never happen again, but we get so used to that, that when we finally slip into the two and three pound marks or even one pound to three pound marks, we start getting a little disappointed with those losses and rather than embracing them and being happy that we lost anything. And I completely understand because when I see three pounds or two pounds, I kind of like, no, oh. um, I'm so used to these big numbers popping up, but that is supposed to be completely normal. You're not supposed to in the real world scenario, eating as much as you should eat, be losing five pounds in a week or six pounds. Um, so <clears throat> two pounds, three pounds, it's really good to be at. That's where I'd like to see the rest of the losses go. I would really like to see one to two pounds per week. Obviously, I know stalls will happen and, and periods and things like that will come in the way and change that. But if I can see like one to two pounds per week from here on out, I will be super, super thrilled. Um, especially since in 18 months, or the 18 month mark is when we want to start trying to have a kid. So next year, fall. I would like to be, and I'm not going to, I don't want to jink myself or anything. I would like to be at my goal weight, which is 135 to 140 pounds by next year, fall. So I have a pretty good while. I've got about 14 months to get down another 80 pounds or so to my goal weight. So I think that's doable. I, I'm really hoping it is. I know that there's that six month um, honeymoon period right after your surgery. They say six months to a year because it. some people fall in between there. Some people go out all the way to a year. That's considered your honeymoon phase where you lose the most because your stomach doesn't stretch as much or it's not as malleable so you can't eat as much. Um, so that's when you lose the most. 
but I definitely go with the whole idea of Lauren losing where you can lose weight no matter how far you are from surgery. The tool doesn't go away. Um, it just becomes a little, a little less extreme as time goes, but it never leaves. You always have that tool. So there's never a time where you can't lose weight with this tool. So it's that whole idea that after six months, you're pretty much screwed. And that's not, or six months to a year, that's not true at all. Um, I fully plan, if I don't hit my goal within a year, to keep losing weight and keep keep going down. And if at least not, if I never hit my goal, it, I'm very satisfied. Even with 100 pounds down, sitting at about 220, I am very much happier with the way I live my life. I am in a large to an extra large top, depending on the, the clothes, but mostly larges is what I'm fitting in right now. Um, I am in a 18 to 16 bottom, which is perfectly fine with me because I can, I and even if I get like yoga pants or something, they're larges and extra larges, I can just go to a store and buy that. I don't need to go to a specialty store when I was at a size like 24 to 26 to try and find, or say 22 to 24. I don't know if I ever got to 26. I just kind of got depressed and stopped buying clothes. So I could have. But when I was wearing 22 and 24, having to go to Torrid, which I absolutely love Torrid. They, thank God for them. But it's expensive. It's really expensive to constantly have to go to stores like that and buy clothes. And it's nice to be able to just go to a normal store and buy clothes. 16, 18 is completely findable. Like you can go to a store and find that anywhere. So, um, for the most part. So I'm pretty ha I'm pretty happy with that. Even if I lost not, never lost another pound, knock on wood, because I do want to keep losing. I do intend to keep on losing, but I'm just saying that if for some reason it completely stopped, I'd still be, I'd still think that the surgery was a success. Okay, so um, out of all the weight I need to lose, I'm at 55% loss of, of my weight. So I'm pretty close to what they expect you to generally lose from the surgery. So pretty much the surgery has almost done its job completely for me. What they expect it to do anyways on an average basis. So that's great, that is great. Everything's going good, very happy. Of course it was my birthday yesterday so I'm in a very good mood. Had a very great birthday, went out and got some tattoo done. Um, basically I just went out and got additional feet on my leg if you guys have seen my tattoo which I will I will show you really quick if you'd like let's see let me angle this down first okay um so here's my tattoo I will there there you go so that's my tattoo um and I got these done so I had more feet put on And that's what I did yesterday. It was pretty cheap. It doesn't, it's not very expensive to have a couple of feet put on your leg. Um, and I, I can continue the trail up and down my leg as, as it goes. Um, more feet as I have more kids, I don't know. So that's my footprint tattoo. That's what I got done yesterday. I got new headphones. I got, um, it was just a good day. We went out to eat. I had some steak. It was good. It was good. Of course I cheated like crazy because it was my fucking birthday. <laughs> I had cake and I had pie and I had a chocolate bar because somebody gave me a chocolate bar at work for my birthday. Um, a little one, little one. But I had a glass of wine at my my um, my in-laws house. I cheated like crazy. I had a piece of French bread, you know, like a baguette, like a thin slice of that with egg salad on top of it. And I ate that thing and it was fucking yummy. Now, am I eating bad today? Fuck no. I got my water. I got my coffee. I got my protein shakes. Today's going to be a pretty close to a, a very liquidy type of day. So yesterday's my birthday. I indulged. I had fun. I checked on the scale today. Didn't gain a pound. Still the same weight. Didn't lose. Didn't gain. But you know, over the course of one day, how much are you going to lose and gain? So <laughs> it didn't affect my weight loss any. Um, so I'm perfectly fine with it. I like, I liked my birthday. It was a good day. And I totally deserved that cake and that I think I had a lemon lemon cheesecake, I think it was. Yeah, lemon cheesecake. And then pie. Someone brought me raspberry pie at work, which is really weird. Um, and then a chocolate. It was just a good day. It was a really good day. Cannot complain. Anyways. Um, let me take a look at this. Let's see. My exercise. Okay, so I found out something really cool yesterday. Since it was my birthday, my husband decided to take the day off and he stayed home. I decided to go for a bike ride for once by myself. Now, I, I know I mentioned you guys, you guys know I walk a fuck ton and I bike a fuck ton, okay? Um, not compared to most, actually. I bike quite little eight miles in an hour is actually not. It's like more of a beginner type area. Um, I don't like go miles and miles and miles and miles, miles like some people do, but 
I can do that and that's that's what I can do and I'm comfortable with it. And I did find out that whenever I go for a walk or whenever I go for a bike ride, I have to bring my daughter with. And she weighs about 35 to 40 pounds in that range. The trailer on my bike is also another 35 to 50 pounds in that range. And my dog comes with and she's about 10 pounds. So to add it all up and all the stuff that is in the trailer and da da da, I carry behind me between 70 and 100 pounds on any given day. On the days that I walk on my stroller, I'm probably carrying about 50 pounds because my dog likes to sit in the stroller below. My daughter is about 35 to 40 pounds and the stroller itself is probably 10 pounds. Anyways, 50 pounds or so when I push, when I walk, and that's every day. Like, it, I don't get breaks from that. And then when I bike, I have to bring her with, and that's like 70 to 100 pounds tra um, trailing behind me. So when I go for walks and bikes with her, which is every day, it's just my normal. I don't go very fast. <laughs> I go, um, I thought like 16 to 17 minute mile walking was about as good as I can get because I just couldn't seem to surpass it or at least it would take me more time to keep going. So that's what I'm averaging when I'm with her. And when I bike, it's an eight minute mile. Well, yesterday on my birthday, I went for a bike ride by myself and holy cow, without the 100 pound tow behind me, I went 10 miles in an hour and I could have kept going. I, I, I stopped because I do exercise for an hour. However long I can take, however much I go in an hour is what I do. I don't go beyond the hour. I just don't have the time to do that. But I wasn't really as tired as I normally am when I go eight miles an hour with my daughter in tow. I went 10 by myself. I went farther than I've ever gone before. And I wasn't, I wasn't nearly as exhausted as I normally am. It was kind of crazy. I just didn't realize that what I'm capable of because I'm always having to tow the little one with me. So, and I, oh, the other day I went for a walk and I walked for a 14 minute mile is what I can walk. 13 to 14, because I was getting 13s in there too, without my daughter with me. So I can walk really fast alone and I can walk, I can bike pretty decent by myself, but I, I'm always towing heavy weight either in front of me or behind me, and that limits my um, ability to go faster. Uh, at the same time, it helps because I'm, I'm working my muscles more um, by <clears throat> towing weight, constantly pushing or pulling. So it's not like I'm, I'm really like thinking that's hindering my, um, my exercise thing. I think it just helps because I'm able to tow that stuff. But um, it, is, it is fun to see what I really can do the potential I have when I'm not towing all that weight. Um, I also was invited by my best friend to go on a 5K with her in Chicago in November, which I was nervous about because I'm, you know, I'm not progressing very fast and I'm towing all this weight. It seems like I'm not getting very far. And she's like, I can run a, even if she can run 11 minute mile, I can't do that. Like I, I at least I didn't think I could. Um, but I, I, now that I'm actually seeing what I can do without my daughter um, being towed and pulled, I actually think I possibly am not as intimidated by it as as, um, as I originally was. Well, she made me kind of feel better. She, she was talking to me and, and she made me kind of feel better about the whole situation. I just, I don't know, I'm so used to being kind of shit at these things that I'm just well, um, not confident in my ability to do these kind of th kinds of things. So we will see. It's not till November. I have quite a bit of time to prepare for it. So I can imagine that I should be able to get to that 5K mark pretty easily by November, hopefully. But it still makes me super nervous because I still don't think I'm gonna be as far as she is. I, I think that even though she's so sweet and um, she made me feel better at the same time, I have like a, I have quite a bit of weight on her. And running when you're like 200 plus pounds isn't exactly the funnest thing in the world. You get shin splints and especially if you land wrong. And so, um, but we will see. She still thinks I'm more fit than her, which is super sweet. But at the same time, I still weigh more. So in the end, in the end it is what it is, right? Okay, moving on, you guys. So that's the fitness stuff. We'll see how that goes. Um, I also wanted to talk about a few things. I watched a video the other day, and it pissed me off, I guess. I don't know. It, it kind of pissed me off. I, I don't generally get super angry at anything. Um, and the video, I'm not, now I'm just going to make a little snippet here. The video I watched is not somebody I'm subscribed to, and it's not somebody who is subscribed to me. So if you're watching this video, more than likely I'm not talking about you. So please don't... Uh, Please don't take offense to anything I'm saying, but, and um, it, this isn't personal on her. Her experience is her experience and it's what she went through, but I, I think I got more mad at the comments below her video than I was at, at her. Um, the video was called Weight Loss Surgery Ruined My Life. And um, I'm not gonna give out the name of a YouTuber, you probably can find it on your own. Um, but she went through a horrible experience. It was very unfortunate with a lap band. 
Um, she only lost like 40 pounds with it and it the doctor she went to was shit and um, she just had a really bad experience with it. And understandable, a lot of people have bad experiences with lab bands. Um, I can't say that people, I mean, I can say that people have bad experiences with the R&Y and people have bad experiences with vertical sleeve and people have bad experiences with DSs. So the plethora, you can have a bad, bad experience with most of them, but lap band is the big one right now. The big one people are focusing on, um, the amount of issues that you have with it when the results are very few. So, um, she had a really rough experience with it, but to blame all, to blame, what, what irritated me is that they blamed the surgery. And I don't think that's right. <laughs> to blame the surgery on things that happened to you because of ignorance on your part, a bad doctor, um, is to me unfair. I think it's very unfair to make the assessment that the weight loss surgery ruined your life when your doctor was shitty and you didn't do your research and you allowed yourself to be um, manipulated by, by, by a crappy, basically by a crappy system. Um, like, I, I don't get personally why you would trust a doctor. The, the way she described this doctor was a little ridiculous. And I can't imagine why you would trust a doctor like that. Now, there are people, of course, in this world that go do things without researching it and, or trust the doctor that they are given completely and solely. And I think that's a little silly to trust your doctor completely and solely. Yes, they're doctors. It doesn't mean that they're gods, okay? Um, they are fallible, they make mistakes, and they don't know everything. Uh, it's completely impossible for them to know everything. So although they are definitely a helpful tool, please, guys. Um, and the, the big thing I took away from this, this story that she told is please do not think for some reason that your doctor's a god, that he knows everything and that he's never wrong. That is just not true. There is a saying, um, seek a second opinion. And it rings true, you guys. Just because your doctor tells you it doesn't mean that it's necessarily valid or true. Um, Sorry, I'm sorry. I know that you, you can trust your doctor and I'm not saying you can't trust your doctor. I trust my doctor completely and fully. But if he says something to me that sounds a little funky, I mean, he's not the end all be all. My doctor is a great guy. I adore him. He did a great job with me, but he's not my end all be all. There are other doctors out there and there's a reason I tell you to seek a second opinion because not every, not one person is gonna know everything. There is to know about the medical history of everything. You definitely have to go and talk to other doctors, especially if you think that your doctor isn't maybe necessarily right. And he's not trying, I don't think these people are trying to steer you wrong on purpose. It's just the way that it is. So I think that her surgeon sucked. <laughs> Pretty much her doctor sucked. But I just don't like, like if you are getting screwed by your doctor, you're the one that has to take charge of that stuff. This is your health, not his health, not her health, your health. And if you feel like you're getting dicked around by your doctor, seek a second opinion. Do not trust solely and completely on the person that is sitting in front of you all the time because they're not your mother. They're not, they're not the almighty. <laughs> they're not a deity. They can't, um, they're not perfect. No one's perfect, right? So why would you think that a doctor is just because they have a PhD? Doesn't, PhD does not mean perfect. Sorry, it doesn't. Um, even Morins have PhDs, okay guys? <laughs> but that's not to you guys necessarily, this is to this this video. And I, I, it's unfortunate that all the comments below were so like disrespectful to the weight loss surgery community. Um, and if you guys do see this video, um, note that it's not the chick in the video necessarily that I feel that, um, because she's talking specifically about lap bands. She's not talking about vertical sleeves. She's not talking about RNY. She's talking about DS. She's talking about lap bands specifically. And I understand the issues that go on with that. So I don't blame her at all for being upset with that surgery. Um, there's a few and far between huge success stories with that surgery. So if you are a success with it, that's great. And it's good for you. And I'm really happy for you. But it is a, it is a wonky tool. And there's a reason why doctor's offices are stopping doing them. So... But if the comments below are really what, what kind of pissed me off, because it got this, like, it's hard enough that we get this done and then having all these people judging us for doing it. And it's like, are you, I mean, 
you, I'll let you guys see it for yourself. Go ahead and take a look. See, I'm not going to link it. Like I said, I don't want to criticize this chick. What she went through was pretty rough and understandably sucky. Um, but to blame it on the surgery rather than to blame it on the doctor or to say, instead of saying weight loss surgery sucked or um, weight loss surgery ruined my life, you could have said this doctor ruined my life because he is a tool um, or he's an idiot rather than saying the surgery did because the surgery first probably didn't. It's probably the doctor who was ill-equipped and unable to perform his duties like he was supposed to. So <sighs> rant over, rant over. Okay, guys. So, um... That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Now I'm going to do a body shot because this is my four month and I am a hundred pounds down. Um, not body shot, but you know, skin flick, you guys skin flick. Um, it's quick ones, you know, five minutes or so. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing an eat in the day thingy, but, um, I think, I think if, if you guys want me to, I can, but I eat what you guys eat. I mean, it's really nothing special or fun. So, um, yeah. Anywho, you guys, okay, I will talk to you soon. I'm going to the chiropractor ne next week. Maybe I'll do a video on that. I don't know. We'll see. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.